Today, we're excited to introduce you to what we're calling Plan Predict Pro, going live on January 1st, 2023. We'll begin today's webinar with a quick intro to TerraBase Energy's full range of products and services before jumping into our main presentation. As we discuss Plan Predict Pro, we'll go over the new subscription plans and pricing. We'll explain what's changing and what's staying the same. And we'll be doing a live demo of the new integration between Plan Predict and the TerraBase development platform. We're also excited to give you a preview of our brand new string sizing to tool called Voltage Pro and some on-demand engineering services that will become available to our enterprise customers. Finally, we'll go over the next steps for signing up or renewing, which is especially important if you wanna take advantage of our early bird pricing offers. We'll finish up today's webinar by answering your questions. And of course, if you miss anything, we'll be sharing the full recording afterwards. Now, I would like to introduce, in, I would like to introduce TerraBase Energy's VP of Development Technology, Tang Lee, who will kick off the presentation. Thanks, Rafal. And hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Tang Lee. As Rafal mentioned, I'm VP of Development Technology here at TerraBase. Um, we're excited to bring you this uh, webinar and continue the series of what regular webinars to share news and details about TerraBase's products. I'd like to start today's webinar with a brief overview of TerraBase. We were founded almost four years ago in early 2019 uh, by a group of solar industry veterans with deep um, industry experience in all aspects of utility scale projects. We're a venture-backed solution provider with a number of products and services aimed at helping the industry scale to the next uh, terawatt and beyond. If you're interested in any of our products and services, please feel free to reach out to any of us for more details. And with that, I'll hand it off to my colleague, David Spildener, Product Director of Plan Predict for today's webinar topic. Thanks, Tang. Uh, Thank you everybody as well for joining into this webinar. Really uh, excited. We've put a lot into uh, bringing this webinar to you. And so we're really excited that it's uh, uh, finally here. And so we're gonna go over some of the, the changes. So with the, with the rollout of Plant Predict Pro, uh, definitely we're making some changes and they're, they're exciting changes. Uh, the first thing just to note is, is we are gonna be updating our pricing. So uh, Plant Predict, Premium was launched a little over two years ago, um, and so we're going to do, be doing a 25% increase on our, our base Plant Predict Premium products, which uh, we're going to be from now on referring to them as Plant Predict Individual and Plant Predict Business. Those are going to be the, the tier names. Um, we're also rolling out two, two new tiers, our Pro tier and then our Enterprise tier. And so uh, these, these uh, Pro and Enterprise tiers are important because that's the uh, the Plant Predict Pro product that we're talking about today is going to be uh, the Pro tier and the Enterprise tier. Um, the TerraBase development platform, which was uh, under development for really since the beginning of TerraBase and has been kind of going along the side with Plant Predict since Plant Predict's acquisition a little over a year ago, the, the TerraBase development platform will only be available exclusively to Plant Predict Pro and Enterprise users going forward. So uh, the, uh, the month of December, uh, the, the development platform is still available in, in its full form to all users. Uh, but, but in beginning on January 1st, that's when you're going to find that it's now an exclusive uh, part of, of the Plant Predict Pro and Enterprise subscription. So if you're a, a development platform user, please pay attention. This is really important. Uh, now, what we are planning to do, and this is in the what's not changing section, is we will continue to leave all projects and simulations available in a read-only mode. So if somebody chooses that uh, to not uh, subscribe to a Plant Predict Pro subscription, but they've been a development platform, user in the past, they'll still have access to their projects and their simulations just in a read-only mode. Uh, we do not want uh, anybody to lose access to any of their data, although we would uh, really encourage you and, and hopefully you'll you'll subscribe to a Plant Predict Pro subscription. Um, we're going to be rolling out a series of Pro tools and Voltage Pro is the first of our Pro tool um, series. And so uh, we're really excited about this concept of Pro tools because we think that there's a lot of 
Um, I would say like smallish utility type tools that can really help a, a utility scale solar developer um, that uh, maybe they, it's been done with Excel in the past or uh, who knows. But the, these tools we think can add a, a tremendous amount of value and we're, they're kind of quick hitting tools. We can develop them uh, very rapidly. And so uh, we're excited about Holdage Pro being our first pro tool. And we have a whole series of pro tools planned. Um, we're, we're consolidating some of our uh, capabilities into this enterprise tier. So the enterprise tier is intended to be for those companies that we have a, the strongest relationship with. Uh, they're our largest customers. And so we really want to create a sense of exclusivity for our enterprise customers. So one thing that's a really big change is plan predict API access is going to be reserved only for enterprise customers. So that's a really big deal. Uh, so if you are benefiting from the uh, plan predict API and we uh, appreciate all of our API customers, uh, you're going to want to pay attention. You're going to want to upgrade to the enterprise package. Uh, we're also rolling out this concept of concierge support. So we have our standard support at planpredict.com uh, that uh, is going to continue to be available. But we wanted to provide some sort of exclusivity for our enterprise customers. So we have this concept of concierge support. We have customer success managers at uh, Terabase that are going to be assigned to each of our enterprise customers so that you have a direct point of contact uh, email line into a customer success manager if you're an enterprise customer. And then lastly, our on-demand engineering services, which Jason is going to talk a little bit about. So we have uh, Terabase's engineering services team uh, ready and waiting to serve our enterprise customers with these uh, engineering services that we're going to be rolling out. And so uh, lastly, I just want to mention that uh, we rolled out single sign-on uh, at the beginning of this month with uh, our December 1st release. And so that's another aspect of this. We talk about the integration between Plan Predict and the dev platform. An important part of that is making sure that you only have one set of credentials to worry about. And so we rolled that out at the beginning of January and or beginning of December, and we're really happy with how that's gone. So what's not changing? We're going to continue to offer a basic version of Plan Predict. Plan Predict's always had a free version, and we always intended to have a free version. And so the basic version gives people the opportunity to get some aspect of energy prediction capability from Plan Predict uh, with no additional cost. You just have to register for Plan Predict. So that'll continue to be available. Um, I mentioned before that uh, your existing per projects and simulations will continue to be available in the Dev platform, even if you don't become a pro subscriber, just it'll be in a read-only mode. And then uh, for the individual and business subscriptions, for the for, for those, uh, all the premium features that you've been using over the past couple of years and that we continue to roll out are going to continue to be available. So if you're just simply a plant predict user and uh, you've, you've been using the, your subscription either as an individual or as a business, that'll just continue to be available to you. Um, so, so those things are not changing. All right. So I'll move ahead. So here's our pricing table. So this is available at plantpredict.com slash pricing. Uh, and uh, you, so this is, this is kind of like a main focal point, something that you can go out and look at. But I wanted to talk through this a little bit. So the price of the different tiers, you can see individual for a single user is going to be $12.50 a year beginning on January 1st. You can still subscribe at the $1,000 per year rate uh, all the way up until uh, January 1st. So if you're thinking about it, this is a chance to get uh, to lock in pricing at $1,000. Something to make note, if you're a monthly subscriber, the monthly rate is going to be going up from $100 a month to $125 a month. And so that's going to just happen automatically with the January or yeah, with the January billing. So if uh, you want to lock in uh, pricing at the $1,000 per year uh, rate, you can do that. Uh, just notify us at support at plantpredict.com if you'd like to, to change your subscription from a monthly to an annual prepay, and we can help you through that. Uh, definitely reach out to us. Our business plan is going to go from $2,500 a year to $3,000 a year, or $2,250 per month to $300 a month. And then the pro and enterprise package, as you can see, pro and enterprise will be $6,000 for the pro package. It's uh, just double the cost of the business package. 
Um, but we are offering an early bird discount for anybody that should subscribe before the end of the year, which is a $1,500 uh, discount of uh, giving you a Plan Predict Pro for $4,500 a year. And then uh, for enterprise, it's going to go to $20,000 $20, a year, but you can get $5,000 in savings if you subscribe uh, before the end of the year at $15,000 a year. Now, some nuances on this uh, because it's, it's you know, January 1st is coming fast and everybody's got the holidays to think about. We are offering a few like grace period options. First off, if you are not currently a Plant Predict uh, subscriber, if, if you uh, have never paid for Plant Predict, either uh, individual business or anything like that, you can use a free trial code, which I'm going to uh, uh, share later. It's early bird is the is the uh, free trial code. You can use that code, and that will give you a 30 day free trial, and we'll honor early bird pricing uh, till the end of that trial period. If you're currently a subscriber and you want to um, have a little bit more time, all you need to do is request a proposal. So our proposals have a 30 day expiration. So you could request a proposal all the way up to uh, New Year's Eve. And uh, I'm going to be working all the way up to that point and processing these proposals. So uh, I'll, I'll see your proposal request come in and then I'll return to you a proposal that have, where we'll have a 30 day expiration period. So that gives you a little bit extra time into January uh, to take advantage of these early bird pricing. But if you do not do any of those things, when January 1st comes, the pricing is going to change and uh, that's going to be the new pricing on a going forward basis. All right. So it looks like it's time for poll number one. So let me look here what poll number one is. All right, so how many projects does your team work on each month? So uh, we're just trying to get an idea of kind of the scale of our user base here. So uh, we'll give you a little bit of time to put in how many projects you work on. Um, so you can see the different options, one, two to five, six to 10, 11 to 19 or 20 plus. I'm not too surprised we've got some large scale uh, players on this call. And so it's looking good. All right, get your final answers in. All right, it looks like we are sharing the poll results. So you can see a large portion of our user base are large developers. So we've, so 20 plus leads the way. And then we have uh, Six to 10 is the second most with 28%. And then uh, 11, 19, and two to five. All right, well, thank you for sharing that information. All right, it's time to do some demo. All right, so I'm going to transition over to my browser. All right, and I'm going to, sorry about that. I will just go with this. It's not the clean view, but uh, I don't have too much stuff on uh, going on here. So we'll just go with this. All right, what you're seeing right now is Plan Predict. So I'm logged into Plan Predict right now. And you can see I have one project, Lake David Solar, uh, for one of my favorite locations um, down in Florida. So this is my only project. So for uh, any of you that have never used Plan Predict before, this is where you get dropped when you log into Plan Predict, the project library. Uh, we also have a weather library, an inverter library, and a module library. This is really important. Um, we have a large selection of weather files, and we have relationships with all the major weather vendors. Now, I just want to point out if you are not currently a subscriber, things like adding a weather file or are adding your own inverter. These things are restricted. That's what we refer to as our paywall. So you have to be at least an individual or a business subscriber in order to be able to get past uh, some of these paywall uh, items. If um, you want to utilize the free trial code that I would mentioned a little bit earlier, all you have to do is go to the subscription tab within Plan Predict and click on this orange, have a promotion code. So I'm going to type in early bird. And that will give you a free 30 day free trial of Plant Predict Professional. All right, so you can see that expiration date, January 12th. 
All right, so, so now when I go back to my weather, if I click add new weather, you can see we can get into our, our add weather. All right, so uh, as I was saying, we have a large selection of global inverters and modules, but if you do not find the inverter or module that you're looking for, you can always add your module as a pan file or add your inverter as an OND file, either that works. And in both cases, you can even uh, just add your module or inverter just off a of data sheet values if you uh, want to do it the completely manual way. All right, all of that is used when you're trying to create a prediction. So we can see that I have a project already started out here. So plant predict at its heart and soul is an energy prediction. It's a modern alternative to PV sys. Quite frankly, that's what plant predict is intended to be. And so uh, plant predict has three different prediction types. One is a block builder. I'm not going to take you all the way through the creation of a block builder, but I did want to bring you to this screen because this is the standard block builder screen. So within a block builder prediction, we have all the parameters that go into a power plant. So if I click on array, you can see we have transformer uh, parameters as well as some electrical loss parameters. If I go to my inverter, we have things like our inverter set point and our DC-AC ratio. And then if I go into my DC field, this is where most of the information is. This is the DC that's connected to that inverter. We have things like our mounting type, uh, ground coverage ratio, strings. We have a small schematic of, our, of what the tracker table looks like and some of the dimensions for row spacing. We have your field structure, so what your array looks like. We even have our slope stuff, which uh, is kind of a big deal, but uh, you can model uh, terrain slope, additional losses, and then last but not least is your ability to add uh, shading objects in, in order to do some shading analysis. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here because this is core plan predict that's been around for a long time, and I want to make sure that we have time to talk about our pro functionality. But I did at least want everybody to see what a block builder energy prediction is for those who, who've never seen it before. All right. Now, most, most of our uh, premium features exist within our map builder. And so I'm going to create a map builder prediction. So build on map is how you get into a map builder prediction. All right, and so we'll walk through to just doing a quick map builder. So with all predictions, you have to first select a weather file. I'm just going to go with the, the base media norm weather file. Okay, and then we have to design our power plant. So we call it map builder because you do your design on a map. So zoom out just a little bit here. Okay, I call this Lake David Solar because I have a uh, KNZ file for this site. Oops. Go to documents demo. And so uh, we're right just to the west of Lake David is, is where our design is. Um, we have Inverters, I'm going to use a SunGrow 3150 for my inverter, and I'm going to use a Longi. I'm going to sort it by rating power and go with the 540 bifacial. And a target 100 megawatts DC, target a 40% ground coverage ratio, set this to horizontal tracker and get rid of my north-south roads and flood the site. So this is core, uh, this, is, this is core map builder functionality, which you're seeing here. Map builder um, is, is something that's available if you're an individual or premium or individual or business subscriber. In fact, you can even do some of the base functionality like what I just demonstrated here uh, using, e even with a basic account. Um, but uh, some of the more advanced features, in fact, I'm going to take this and, and max it out. So if you want to max out your site, you just put a megawatt DC value that's really high, and then I'll max it out. You can see here, we're able to fit 91 megawatts AC or 110 megawatts DC on this site using uh, this configuration. So some of the premium features that you get within 
uh, map builder is you can do not only a quick capacity analysis, but you can also do some topographical analysis. So the map builder is really well designed for early stage prospecting. If you want to understand your, your site capacity, you want to understand some of the topographical topography of your site, you can do that very quickly and easily within map builder. So you can see we've brought in elevation points for this location and we created a digital surface and then build a 3D model of your power plant on top of that. We have lots of handy tools to understand things like slope constraints. So like areas where there's such high slope that I may not want to build. We even do things like slope banding and post height analysis. If you would like to do a cut, cut fill like grading analysis, you can do those kind of things with the, with the 3D site view. Uh, you also get the uh, PLP 1000, which is our handy downloadable PDF document uh, that will put together a um, nice looking PDF document uh, that'll show what your layout is and then some of the details of your project with a title block, the kind of thing that you can then share with municipalities, permitting agencies, or, or just investors and stakeholders. All right. Now with the, the, the map builder layout is designed for speed. That's one of the things we, we've designed it for scale and for speed so that you can be really fast in your permitting application. So that's the reason why even at 100 megawatts, I'm able to get a layout in like less than a second. It's, it's incredibly fast. But one of the reasons why that is, is just the algorithm that it's using. It's a fairly simple algorithm. Uh, it's really focused mostly on DC capacity, how much how many trackers can I fit onto this site? And then based upon your DC-AC ratio, it's going to come up with a number of inverters and then construct your power plant accordingly to come up with a DC-AC ratio and a megawatts AC and a megawatts DC. We're able to put together a very simple six line bill of materials with all of this algorithm. I'm bringing up, I'm talking about all of this because I'm gonna show you the TerraBase development platform, which also has a layout engine with it. But the layout engine in the dev platform is a more detailed layout engine that's designed around not only laying out all of your, your DC tables, your trackers and modules, but it also wires up those tables to combiner boxes, to inverters so that we can get trenching length, table length, and then get your, uh, your, your medium voltage cabling from the inverters all the way to the substation. So uh, if, if you're, just doing early stage prospecting, you probably could get by with just using the map builder uh, capacity assessment uh, for your, your sites that you're looking at. But once you get to a point where you may want to do a little more detailed design and get into optimization, that's when you may need the Plant Predict Pro product. All right, we can also, uh, so I already showed you that that's where I came in to upload KMZ data. You can also upload your digital elevation map data. So if you have a LIDAR topo, you can upload that into the software and do the same topography analysis. And then lastly, you can download information either as a KMZ file. So I could download this as a KMZ and open it in Google Earth. Or you can download uh, as a DXF file. Uh, and we even have um, the, uh, the ability to uh, open that in AutoCAD or Civil 3D. So. Here's the, the power plant in Google Earth. All right, so if you're gonna open it in Civil 3D, you gotta select a coordinate system. So that's a really important aspect there. All right, all of this is in, is in order to ultimately get an energy prediction. So uh, within Plant Predict, we have all the complex models like decomposition models, transposition models, temperature models, incident angle models, spectral models, and even some advanced things like air mass and soiling. The ability to run multi-year predictions, we can do degradation modeling for a multi-year, you can do that. And we can also do uncertainty analysis if you wanna get like a P90 to go along with your P50, you can do that. I'm going to just use my default settings and kick that prediction off. All right, so now what, Plant Predict does is it's a cloud-based engine. So we have the power of the cloud at our disposal. So we have servers running uh, at our data center that will take that prediction that's been packaged up from that design 
and it'll run the prediction. You can see it takes somewhere around 10 to 30 seconds in order to run that prediction. And here's our energy results. So that power plant near Lake David's gonna produce 204 gigawatt hours of electricity. You can see my specific yield, performance ratio. There's my loss tree. And we can also go ahead and download things like 8760 in Excel format or plant summary PDF. All of these are just core plant predict capabilities uh, that have been around for a long time. But uh, the reason why I've been running through that somewhat fast is because I wanted to make sure we had time to talk about uh, the, the development platform. So you'll notice down here in our Pro Tools section, so this is something that just came out within the last few weeks is that we've added this Pro Tools section. And uh, our first Pro Tool is the TerraBase development platform. So when I click on that, it's going to log me into the TerraBase development platform using my credentials. I mentioned single sign-on. So uh, it logged me in. And it also brought over my, uh, my subscription settings. So when I click on this, you'll see that I've got a free trial. There's my demo email address. And you can see I've got a Lake David project already started in my development platform. So uh, I've already done a little bit of analysis within the development platform. So you can see this is the Lake David uh, power plant design the dev platform. So the array shapes are a little bit different uh, than what we have in Plant Predict. That's just the nature of how the, the Terra-based development platform is doing its layouts. And I'd mentioned before, it not only does a uh, DC design, so I'm going to turn this on so that we can see the trackers. So you'll see that uh, we've got trackers laid out here, but then as I zoom in, we'll see these red dots. And then as I take it into 3D mode, and I can do that by using my right mouse button, and I zoom in, we even have like combiner boxes. So uh, it's very powerful. Uh, it's it's a more constructible design because we're actually wiring up our tables to our combiner boxes and to our inverters and then calculating our cable lengths accordingly. So let me walk you through how to do that. So I'm going to create a new simulation. You can see we already have a site plan established, but I'm going to go into that just so that we can, can see that. The best way to do a site plan if you have a uh, plant predict a uh, map builder prediction is you can bring in the KMZ file from Plan Predict, and you can see I've already got uh, the, the KMZ loaded, but you can easily select which shapes are boundaries, which ones are exclusions, and whatnot. Now, within the dev platform, you do have to establish a substation. So this uh, purple square down here, if I come over here and click edit, it'll it'll bring that up. So this is my substation. I can define my substation length and width. Uh, I can, can name it however I want to. All right, now this is important. This is something that, that you have to do in order to have a valid site plan within uh, the Terra Dev platform. And that's because we'll do the, the wiring all the way from the inverters to that substation and then calculate the lengths accordingly. All right, we have these quick selection tiles. So if I select bifacial, single axis tracker, and central inverter, the tool will automatically link up with uh, a bifacial module. Uh, it'll use default single axis tracker characteristics, and then it'll uh, use a central inverter. Now, the reason why we do these quick selection tiles is because sometimes people just wanna run through really fast and get a quick, a quick analysis. Now you can do that within the dev platform. You can just next your way through and use all the default selections. And what it'll do is it'll get you into this mode. Now you'll notice within the dev platform, the layout does take a little bit longer than the dev platform. And that's because what it's doing is a more complex operation. So it's not just laying out uh, tracker tables and coming up with, with an AC calculation based upon that. It's actually laying out the tracker tables and then going back through and wiring all of those tracker tables up to combiner boxes and then ultimately to inverters. And the reason why we do that is because we, we build out a 25 line bill of material uh, based upon that design. So if you remember in Plant Predict, it was six lines in the dev platform, we do 25 lines. That includes not only your modules, your trackers, but also things like posts, trenching length, 
cable lengths, as well as things like road, uh, uh, fencing, uh, those kind of things are all captured in that uh, bill of quantities. And then what we do is we use that bill of quantities to run against our cost service. So we've got a cost service with uh, market pricing on different EPC services and materials. And we do a bottoms up cost estimate uh, with each design. And then we take that cost estimate and bundle it into an LCOE. Now, the power of this is not only just to get in a single case, uh, an energy yield, a cost estimate and an LCOE, but where this becomes really powerful is when you want to go into optimization. So I'm going to clone that simulation that we just did there, and we're going to run a quick optimization run on it. So I'm going to blow through that and get into this optimization screen. So within the optimization screen, we can uh, go to option number two. There's two different approaches that you can take to optimization. You can use our handy GCR solver or you can use our sensitivity analysis. So sensitivity analysis is kind of the traditional, I just wanna give a range of GCRs and a range of DCAC ratios and see what kind of energy production and cost and uh, financials we can get for those scenarios. Uh, the GCR solver is really slick because you can put in what your target energy at point of interconnection is going to be, and then adjust this slider to so what DCAC ratios you're interested in analyzing. So I'm going to go from 1.15 to 1.4. You can specify your interval. I'm just going to use 0.05 for my interval. And then just click on the scenarios that you want to try out. So I've just selected four scenarios. You can see they uh, were placed into this tray. And then I hit next. Now, before I kick off this optimization, uh, I can go in and adjust things like my uh, EPC costs. You could use just the default cost, or you could go in and override your costs, or you can go into your financial inputs, and these are our default financial input assumptions, things like weighted average cost of capital, corporate tax rate, your ITC, or you can put in uh, your own financial assumptions. We also have things like energy losses. Uh, this is what gets passed into Plan Predict. Uh, once you've once you've got your assumptions set, you hit submit, and the tool is going to be off and running. So uh, what, what the dev platform does is it does a, a completely independent, separate design for each of those scenarios. This doesn't like do one design and then uh, use like linear scaling or anything like that. It does a full detailed layout for every one of those scenarios, so you get a full DC build up as well as all the wiring for each of those different scenarios and then it takes uh, each of those unique power plants and hands them off to plant predict you can see plant predicts running in the background if i jump over to plant predict and click on my prediction log you'll see we have those predictions running right there in plant predict and so it'll run a unique energy prediction for each of those scenarios and then it'll do a detailed boq for each of those scenarios and financial model. So you're not getting any kind of like linear scaling, you're getting full detailed individual designs. All right, so we'll let that run. And while that's running, I'm gonna jump back over to the design I'd ran before and just show you some of the outputs. All right, so I click the little download button and it's gonna package up a zip file with all the uh, design deliverables. And here they are. So first off, our bill of quantities. So based upon that design, we do a, uh, a bottoms up takeoff. The first page of the BOQ report is just like an overall like design report that gives you all the details of your design. But uh, the exciting thing is the second tab where we lay out your 25 line BOQ. So things like modules, tracker tables, piles, strings. We get into cable lengths, how many combiner boxes, your fuses. Um, all the way down here to internal rows and perimeter fences. We even have like a SCADA system included in there. And then when I go to the MV line details, this is going to show you the, uh, the wiring approach that we use. So going from the substation to AC station one, then from AC station one to AC station two, so on and so forth. So you can then 
navigate through how the wiring is being done, and then you can see how we calculate things like trench length and cable length uh, on this screen. All right, we'll leave that open and we'll jump into the cost estimate. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so that's a little easier for you to see. So here's our cost estimate. So using things like our module qu quantity and cost per watt, we're able to come up with estimated costs. Uh, we also have things like freight, then we have VOS materials, and then uh, uh, some of the uh, labor costs associated with doing installations, and then some of your overhead and contingency line items will, will be built out here. So this is actually part of like a, a 200 line uh, cost estimate that we then consolidate down into, I guess it's like 65 lines uh, here in this report that we show you. All right, and then that's used to inform this financial model. All right, so here's the financial model. So first off, you have a cover page that gives you some high level, not only your assumptions, but also things like your IRR, LCOE, and NPV. And then on the second page, this is your, your cash flow model that walks you through. Um, in this case, I did a 25 year project, so it, it'll do cash flows for the course of 25 years. So things like your plant predict energy yield gets brought in here, your cost gets brought in here, so all of the components that you need in order to run this get, get passed into this. And that's how you ultimately, I'll jump back over to my optimization run. You can use that to then sort on LCOE and figure out which of these scenarios looks like 1.2 and, and 0.48 GCR ended up getting us our lowest LCOE uh, in that situation. So, um, and then you can also, just throw in here if you want to do some uh, on screen comparisons, you can do side by side comparisons and get high level BOQ information and then compare that in with things like EPC cost LCOE and you can export that as an as an Excel file as well. So uh, all right. I moved pretty quickly there, but uh, I hope that just that really quick example gives you somewhat of an idea of the power that you get with the Plant Predict professional uh, subscription. So just to kind of recap, I'm gonna go to my pricing page. So the work that I was doing with the, with the Block Builder and the Map Builder are available with your individual or your business subscriptions. But if you wanna go into a detailed design and use our, our BOQ takeoff, as well as our bottoms up cost estimating and financial modeling, you'll need to go with a pro package. Uh, and when you go to pro, you also get things like Voltage Pro and all of our future pro tools uh, as well. And then if you are a large customer and you wanna be one of our most exclusive customers, you can always subscribe to an enterprise package, which will not only get you everything that we've talked about here, including our pro tools and the platform, but you'll also, uh, get access to our Plant Predict API and SDK, as well as concierge support and on-demand engineering services. All right, so request your subscription or request your proposals, sign up for your free trials. I'll, I'll kind of reiterate that here in a minute, but uh, uh, with that, we're gonna transition back over to our presentation. Let's see here, I've got a lot of things open. So here we are at the presentation. And with that, we are ready for poll number two. So let's look at let's look at what poll number two is. Okay, which of these cap capabilities are you most interested in as Pro Tools? So we're trying to get an idea as we have a roadmap of Pro Tools that we're trying to construct, and this is your chance to influence that roadmap. So take a look at some of the options that we have listed on there. So one thing is cable sizing. Um, another one is a detailed cost configurator. Um, we have an AC capacity analysis. Uh, we also have an earthwork assessment, some detailed grading, cut fill, um, going into to more detail there. And another one is soiling loss, you know, big, 
big thing in the world these days are our detailed soiling and snow loss. Uh, that's another option that we have. So uh, we'll give you a few minutes to uh, think through cable sizing, cost configurating, AC, modeling, earthwork, or soiling loss. All right. And go ahead and show the results. There you have it. So uh, roughly 60%. It looks like earthwork is the big challenge of the day, and we're not too surprised by that, um, quite frankly. Uh, we hear that a lot uh, when we're doing demos, and just with what we've been seeing in the industry, you'll be happy to know we've got some really cool stuff in the works when it comes to earthwork assessment. So table sizing is a close second at the 45%, and then cost, soiling, and then AC uh, capacity. So thank you so much for, for sharing that information with us. All right, Jason, Jason, you are up. So I'm going to hand off over to my colleague, Jason, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about what we've got planned for Voltage Pro. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Spokes, the Director of Project Engineering at Terrabase, and I'm going to be covering, I think, the next three slides. Um, and starting off with Voltage Pro. So Voltage Pro, as David mentioned, is one of Terabase's first integrated engineering tools or applications that we're bundling with uh, PlantPredict. Uh, Voltage Pro is planned to be released in Q1 2023 with full access available to pro and enterprise tier licenses. Uh, the application is intended to streamline and provide some additional transparency to string sizing calculations when using the simulation method. And this application fits very well within PlantPredict um, suite of products because at its heart, it's running simulations within PlantPredict um, for a very specific purpose. So rather than looking at energy yield, uh, in this case, uh, Voltage Pro is really looking at open circuit voltage simulations. Um, I'm showing some teaser screenshots here of the upcoming user interface. Uh, within Voltage Pro, you'll be able to access the application from the same login and interface as you currently access PlantPredict. You'll be able to pull in the same weather data, module data, and inverted data that you currently have directly from PlantPredict. Um, you'll be able to compare string sizing results across several different calculation methods, and you'll be able to download a string sizing report. Um, you'll also be able to create and save uh, string sizing simulations within the application, similar to how you currently create and save simulations in PlantPredict. Um, next slide, please. Um, one of the things I'm most excited about within Voltage Pro is related to some of the work that we've been doing around air temperature safety factors. And one of the most challenging aspects of performing string sizing uh, calculations using a simulation method is um, how exactly to quantify and justify some of the safety factors that should be applied on top of the simulation results. And so to that end, we've been collaborating directly with Clean Power Research to develop uh, some underlying data necessary to calculate air temperature related safety factors for projects anywhere in the world. So global coverage. Um, and that would be for simulations using multi-year solar, solar Anywhere data sets. So for the initial release of Voltage Pro, air temperature related safety factors will be automatically computed and pulled into the string sizing simulation when using Solar Anywhere data. Other, way, other weather data sources can, of course, um, be used uh, initially. Um, but these safety factors would need to be manually post-processed and entered into the application directly by the user. We plan to work with other weather data providers uh, to provide similar automation of temperature-related 
safety factors after our initial release of Voltage Pro. Um, can you go back? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, can you go back? Back one slide, please. Thanks. Uh, so if you missed it, we provided a fairly in-depth webinar last month on string sizing using open circuit voltage simulations. That recording can be accessed using the link that's shown here. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a good reference if you care to learn more about some of the underlying thinking that's gone into the Voltage Pro application. Uh, also, please note that we plan to host another webinar in Q1 to introduce the launch of Voltage Pro. Um, and we'll also have Clean Power Research join us to present their research um, that has gone into some of the underlying data that will be used by Voltage Pro to calculate the air temperature related safety factors that I mentioned before. So be out on the look, be on the lookout uh, for, for that webinar in early 2023. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this slide is related to on-demand engineering services. Um, as David mentioned before, this is an exclusive offering to the enterprise tier of licenses for Plant Predict. Um, and what this really means and what this gives uh, is preferred pricing for some of the more standard deliverables. And so we're trying to somewhat standardize and streamline the preparation of these deliverables, but still through uh, a, a manual approach. So we're still using engineers and designers to prepare these. We're using more traditional software like CAD and PVSYST um, to prepare these. Um, and we're working directly with your team face-to-face um, -face or web, uh, web interface to web interface um, to prepare these. So this would include, for example, running a parallel PVSYS report. So if you've already modeled your system in PlantPredict and you want sort of a parallel version of that in PVSYS, we can do that. <clears throat> um, preparing more formal uh, CAD or KMZ layouts um, and ultimately uh, being able to provide that as a PDF. Um, and then other examples might be constraints mapping, single line diagrams, and actually preparing some, some formal reports associated with optimization of DCAC ratio and ground coverage ratio. Um, happy to provide more information on this as needed. Um, please note that this will require a separate consulting services agreement in addition to the Plant Predict software license uh, agreement. Um, and with that, I will hand it back over to David. All right, thanks, Jason. Sorry about my erratic PowerPoint controls there. <laughs> no problem. But nice job, so. All right, in summary, we're gonna try to wrap this up. So the big thing that we want everybody to take away here is that the, there is some time to capture early bird pricing. Uh, the, the official pricing goes into action January 1st, but you still have a few weeks here uh, to take advantage of the 25% discount. So if you've never used Plant Predict before, please go to plantpredict.com, click that orange register button in the upper right hand corner and create a free Plant Predict account. You can then use that early bird uh, free trial code in order to get yourself full Plant Predict Pro access for uh, 30 days. Uh, if you are an existing user, um, you can upgrade to Plant Predict Pro or Enterprise. Uh, we just do that via proposals. So uh, um, I will write up an, an official proposal for you and send that over to you. You can send it back to me signed and we can move from there. Uh, so if you're interested in going from your current subscription level to a pro or enterprise, definitely we can we can help you take care of that. All right, and so with that, I think it's time to go into Q&A. Yes, so we'll go into Q&A and one quick reminder, um, we will be sending you a recording of this session. So if you missed anything or you wanna share this with your team, that will be available in the next uh, 24 hours or so. All right, um, starting with the first question here, if I'm an existing subscriber and my renewal date is in March, but I want to take advantage of the early bird pricing. How, how does that work? Oh, well, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, just to, to frame this, so you're already a subscriber, 
let's say the plant predict business and you uh, your renewal date is in March what we what we will do is we will give you a prorated rate of plant predict pro for the months of January and February and then we'll give you a full year uh, another 12 months of Plan Predict Pro starting with your renewal date all the way to uh, March 2024. So uh, in that in your situation particularly, you can actually lock in early bird pricing for 14 months rather than just 12 months. Uh, so definitely don't think about this as, hey, my renewal date isn't until middle of next year, so uh, I'm not going to get a chance at, at this early bird pricing. You absolutely can. Uh, take advantage of the early bird pricing. In fact, you can get a little bit bonus early bird pricing because we will get you a prorated uh, pro rate for, boy, that's using pro a little too much, but a prorated rate for uh, the, the months between now and your, your renewal date. Okay, next right. question here. Um, will enterprise users get access to the plant design set of tools? Uh, enterprise users will will definitely so if you are an enterprise customer uh, you will get access to the full suite of, of offerings that we have uh, the development platform the map builder uh, as well as core plant predict as as well as API access so uh, definitely um, the the enterprise tier is exclusive so uh, it's not the majority of our customers our enterprise uh, but we we would love to have more. Um, it's it's obviously the the tightest partnership that we have with our customers is when they come into that enterprise tier. So uh, if you're interested, let us know. We'd we'd be happy to to welcome you into that tier. All right. Here, um, does the developer mode layout designing slash generation factor in any site constraints like wetlands, flood zones, existing structures? If so, where does that data come from? If it doesn't pull from public private data sources, can that data be uploaded slash included similar to import of DEM data for topo analysis? So yes, uh, and the simple answer to that question is yes. So what you uh, uh, did not may not have noticed in my uh, Lake David scenario is I had excluded some wetlands. Uh, we have a link to the United States Fish and Wildlife Services wetland database that will pull in the wetland data and with a single click you can convert all those wetlands into constraints so that that works really well um, you can also draw your own constraints in so we we give the ability to layer in your own constraints and your design will take those constraints into consideration and you will not build dc on top of those constraints so uh, so the answer is yes we do take into consideration things like wetlands uh, our data source is United States Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, and uh, so there you go. Have you incorporated VDE's CCC sub hourly clipping model into Plan Predict? <laughs> our friends at VDE. No, but we're work, we've, we've worked with VDE. So uh, within Plan Predict, Plan Predict does the actual, does uh, sub hourly modeling just natively. That's just part of how Plan Predict was, was originally constructed. And uh, I did a webinar back in September that uh, uh, was pretty well attended and when we have links to it on our website, you might want to check it out. Uh, we showed how you can model things like clipping losses using sub-hourly weather data. Um, there's uh, a few of our Weather data providers offer sub hourly data, solar GIS, clean power research, NSRDB. Um, so, what you can do is you can model a full 8760 and then model a sub hourly and then do a comparison, and that'll help you understand things like clipping losses. Clipping losses aren't the only thing that, that uh, are impacted by sub hourly. You also have things like temperature and also transposition so the the sun does not move in a linear way so uh, don't get me started on all of that but uh, we, so we model at the sub hourly level and the reason why I, I mentioned that is because you don't have to apply something like a, a d-rate factor um, I'm familiar with the with the VDE triple C and we and, and there is a possibility that we're going to do something in the future around that 
um, because uh, the research that they've done is, is phenomenal and it's really, really important information. And I think that there's a way that we can maybe integrate a little bit more of the triple C model into Plan Predict. Um, uh, that's kind of been our count, some of the discussions we've had. So thanks for asking. All right, we have a few more minutes, um, so we'll try to take care of a few more questions. We might go over a couple minutes, so feel free to stick around. Uh, next question here. The layout shows the inverters placed in the road between trackers. Do you have the ability to better control the placement, i.e. dropping the inverter into an array cutout area where three to four rows of or trackers are shortened? Yeah, that is not currently how our layout engine works. So our layout engine, is assuming like a corridor design. And so uh, if it's been something that we've talked about on our roadmap is the ability to do the whole cutout concept, but that's just not currently how uh, both the map builder and the Terra-based development platform both use the corridor concept where you're uh, creating roads through your arrays and you're gonna be placing your inverters just off of those roads. So, um, so that's, that is what it is. All right, next question. Um, where can we access third party, i.e. reviews of Plan Predict in the Resource Center? And on the resource page. So uh, within Plan Predict, there's a resources page. It's right near the subscription. Um, I'll just bring it up real quick. So right here under the resources, we have our download. So our accuracy of assessments white paper, as well as our Black and Beach, ICF, Lidos, and DMV technical review papers are available in our resource center. So check that out. Okay, another question. Uh, how much of the development platform is accessible via API? Okay, so the development platform it is not currently part of our API SDK um, tool set. Uh, there's, there's a possibility at some point we will, because there's certain aspects of the development platform that I think are really interesting uh, via API. One is like that cost service. So if you could uh, interact with that, I think that would be a very powerful uh, capability. And that's something definitely on our roadmap. But uh, the, the API, when we refer to the Plant Predict API, it's still kind of the traditional API that we've offered now for, for many years and the SDK that, that simplifies interacting with that API, uh, which, will, which will allow you to build projects, predictions, power plants, all through uh, a scripting language like Python and uh, interact with Plant Predict accordingly. All right, next question here. Um, what additional Pro Tools are you planning to release? Well, we gave you a sneak peek at that with the uh, poll we ran earlier. So uh, it sounds like uh, the majority of you would like to see us go in the direction of um, grading analysis. And so uh, uh, that's something that we, we can look forward to in the next year. So, um, uh, so yeah, and we're always, uh, exploring other ideas and stuff like that, you're, you're more than welcome to pass along. Uh, if you have an idea, uh, you can definitely reach us at support at plantpredict.com. Uh, we're always interested in your feedback. So, uh, And on that same note about the Pro Tools, uh, will future Pro Tools be included in my Pro subscription if, if I subscribe now? Yeah, good question. So that's the intention. So the intention is that we're going to roll out additional Pro Tools and as a pro subscriber, you'll be, uh, you'll have access to that. Uh, that's definitely the intention and the, the vision around that whole pro and enterprise tier. Um, there may be some tools that we develop in the future that are uh, beyond what we consider the scope of our pro tools. Um, we are a software company and we're developing software all the time. So there may be some new products that come out in the future that would just be a whole separate product all of its own. Uh, but uh, the, the Pro Tools, we plan to uh, just roll those out and our Pro subscribers are going to be beneficiaries of that development. And, and that's really what your subscriptions go to. Your subscription fees go to is, is helping us fund future development. So. All right, with that, we're at the top of the hour, so we'll end it here today. 
Um, we have a few more questions that came in that we're going to answer individually. Um, keep your um, keep an eye out for the recording. Uh, there's a post webinar survey. If you want to ask additional questions, please utilize that. And we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And um, our next mm -hmm. webinar will be um, sometime in Q1. We're going to try to do a webinar about the uh, a full demo of the Voltage Pro tool. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.